reference folder. We don't need this one anymore. Pencil there, yep. Good, good. Probably keep it simple for time's sake. So, let me show you the way I would do this if we were starting truly from scratch, so everyone gets an idea. I need one of these. Too hard. You see, I've already lied to you because I said I'm starting from scratch, but what I'm really doing here is searching thousands of samples that I've accumulated over 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's not exactly fair. I think I'm going to try pitching that one down. I'm going to drag it into Ableton Sampler. Uh, we'll go for half length kick from what I saw on most of these waveforms. You can see the kick usually dies a reasonable amount before um, the halfway point in the bar here. We don't want a long kick drum, certainly because... Uh, we're going to be using a moving bass line. So you don't want the kick drum to have any pitch. If you saw my tuning kicks video, thoroughly recommended. Mm. We will soon find out if this will pitch. Not greatly. Can we add a pitch envelope? It's not too bad. Where are we hitting? In the 50 hertz area. That's about the same as the reference. We, if the flavor is really off the mark, I may come back to that and add a top kick to it. I don't normally recommend it. Like I say, I'm a big proponent of just finding the right sample. Um, for the sake of a stream though, uh, we may have to just plow on or else I, I do spend hours looking at uh, looking for drums and then literally minutes mixing. <laughs> I do it that way around. You see, if you want that vibe, all you have to do is type 909 into Ableton or find yourself some 909 samples. I may go for a short, shorter hat. I need to take the, um, I need to mute these. I just need them to close the, close the hat, the hat on the, um, on the kick drums. And then we could put in some in between from the rim shots. Go slightly swung. The swing is only going to affect these because these are on the um, these are syncopated. If you don't know how swing works, it moves every other. It would move these to the right. Basically, that's how swing works. So none of your unsyncopated notes, the ones on the beats, in our case eighths, none of the eighths would get moved. Only the in between sixteenths would move with 16 swing. It's going to depend on our bass line because Vogue has a 909. Definitely has a 909 style clap. Uh, but I will do it on a separate track anyway, because we need. And then we'll find a top loop and we're probably good to start uh, playing with bass. Ooh, like it. There's something with a good crack in the, in the high mids. It's going to do us. I'm not hearing um, too many layers. And you, you don't want one with, if you're looking for tight claps, pay attention to the start of the sample. You don't want much of a buildup. I think between these lots, we will be fine. Probably just this one. 
It's a start. And then the real flavor comes from a good top loop. Let's find... I think Martin, that's all going to be a bit too busy. But they're good when you want to fill out space, should you ever want to do that. Yeah, I think all these are going to be a little bit busy. Double check. Uh, that's swung. Nice tambourine. Let's just double check it with. The main giveaway to the swing is this swung hi hat here. Yeah, see how late that one is? I may move these um, rims to their own uh, track. Let's just duplicate this. I'm going to have these a lot more swung. Okay, it's in the ballpark. Let's get bass things. Actually, for those of you who work with samples, you would do this way. I'm going to go and grab a synth, uh, obviously vital, and make a, make a bass line. But if that's not your vibe, yeah, you'll be on uh, splice looking for those kind of lines. Hmm. Because we've gone swung, we're going to go for this more Fisher... Two different vibes there. This is uh, what we call eighths vibe, square eighths. And obviously it's a layer of three things. We have the, the top fuzzy synth thing. The bass itself is actually not, doesn't have a lot of character. It's, it's kind of just a sub underneath there. And that sub could be split into two layers, like an upper mid layer and a very low, you know, sine wave, I don't know. Um, and the third bass being the in-between donk. Whereas this one is all mostly one noise, possibly separate sub layer. I have a stab on the one as well. So let's try both types of lines. That sound is very easy to make. You just want a slightly um, resonant filter on a saw, triggered by an envelope like this but not as much as that we need quicker let's give it some bark Ladder filter. A bit more of that squelch. You can always go acid with that as well. So uh, we have two ways. We're going to need a side chain. Keep this out of the way. And I'm also going to add a. Uh, Subtrack. Lots to do. Uh, we're just going to go sine wave. But oh, we know we're Frisian. Uh, what key should we choose? So Fisher's in what? So that's in G, which makes Noizu F. Uh, both Noizus are in F. What was rhymed us with? G. All right, let's split the difference. Let's go F sharp. <laughs> So we have a few options. Let's just.
I'll show you the, the plodding eighth kind of. We could do something like that. Uh, we need to match the swing. Now, um, I'm at zero. Let's just solo the kick and this. It's not actually the best example. <laughs> We're getting away with that because I've not got a lot of sub. Let's just go down the octave. Uh, let's just put some more notes in for the sake of this demonstration. Oh, of course, the sidechain's already on. Sorry, my bad. I forgot I'd imported that. Right, let's turn the sidechain off. Now you'll hear the distortion I'm talking about. That kind of distortion. So you, you can hear the farting there, if you want to call it that. So all I do, basically, in terms of the reason I end up at commercial level is because I'm trying to match a reference, and I just work until the distortion goes away. And that's it. And you do that by just picking the right sounds. And as long as you're referencing often enough, your ears will just probably guide you. Obviously, you need a good ear training. It still takes time and effort, and it's not a foolproof lesson for uh, newcomers. But I think it's far easier to do something this way than trying to mix at a lower level and then only to find out that you can't master it later. And you have to then work backwards through the track that you've made finding all the mistakes that are causing the master to sound bad. If you just work from the beginning to the reference, uh, you shouldn't have to mix or master it. So, and then you will just, you will just be in the ballpark of loudness as, as the track that you're referencing, right? That's, that's all it is. Question is, what octave should we go in if we're going F sharp? Because um, Vogue is very high. Yeah, I think we can go high. Now I'm wanting this to swing even more. Now I've listened to that. This is a turnaround. Let's duplicate twice. And I'm going to put this here. This is F sharp Phrygian, by the way. The notes of F-sharp Phrygian are, well, if you don't know, you can just draw all the notes from E. All the white notes from E are a Phrygian scale, Phrygian mode for you purists. And you can just move that up to F-sharp, and now you know the notes of F-sharp Phrygian. In fact, I'll keep that off to the left there so we can see it for reference. Let's move over to a subtract. This is one. I'm, I'm going to have this down the octave. I'm going to put some release on this. Get rid of the attack to stop the click. I may or may not want harmonics on that because we've got them above, but so let's just do that for now. We need side chains on here. So the low side chain, let us measure the length of our kick. We already know it should be about halfway. Let's just look on STFUs. Yep. That's absolutely solid until just after the halfway line. So we're going to be completely ruthless on the sub frequencies and just basically have that like that. So the kick drum is pretty much full scale until about there. Let's do that and I'll have, we'll have to put a little fade in here to stop the click at the end although in the mix you probably won't hear it 
and some even might argue that the click can help the attack of the kick drum. So we'll see. Now the sidechain on this one doesn't have to be anywhere near as aggressive. We'll just judge this by ear. But what I'm going to do, just to check levels, I want to just check below 80. There we go, below 60. We can hear that lowest octave. And then up in 80, we'll hear the, the main bass hit. The point, the point was, don't get confused between this octave and this one. There's two different bass, um, not necessarily bass parts, those are bass harmonics, but being aware that they both exist. Because your kick drum is down in the 50 hertz area on its longest note, as you can see from the analyzer. So you've got to be careful with which octaves you're manipulating versus what drums, etc. But this is just so we can check down here. We can hear longer notes, obviously, but... We can hear his upper octave is heavy, more heavier side chain than ours. Let's just do that sub octave. It sounds like his sub is is higher than ours, but that could just be the longer notes. Now, depending on what groove you wanted right um, at the very bottom there, you could just extend your um, your subtrack. Let me change this color so I've got, uh, so I know where I'm at. You could literally just uh, do this with your subtrack if you wanted extended low end. Not necessarily um, a good idea for danceability. You want You do want space down there. But if you want it to be really just a big, long, rumbling, heavy sounding track, Eli Brown style, for example, his bottom ends are always very um, extended. You, you may play with the length on your subtrack. Right, let's find, uh, we want some stabs. I might do both. I might go stab on the one and the one from the, um, the middle of atmosphere. Let's move our drop over here just so we... Because we, we do have a bass gap. We could put something here. I think that would be cool. You could make it with... Um, I'm just going to use the bass part to get my timing there. Let's just have a look at some bass one-shots. See what we've got in the, in the, uh, the pool. sound a bit boring oh orfits yes why not um good idea i forgot about meat beats or the orb hits no it's orb hits yes any interesting noises in here let's get the keyboard on That's an interesting noise. I could make that very bright with a little reverb. That would be an interesting stab. Um, good at short reverbs is Proto. 
by uh, Yuhi. Proto verb. go every other I'm not sure on this baseline or this groove yet but around like that let's put some ping pong on it um i'm going to take it off grid i think i want it to be faster than that it doesn't have to be in time let's go to milliseconds and just uh play around with this kind of range too fast Let's up repeats. High frequencies. Too still too slow. Almost like a spring reverb. That kind of thing. There we go. Can we drive it? Yeah, why not? some more let's find some stabs chords Ooh. should I just go with the first one that sounds pretty cool let's just see our, our options that's not a stab nope <laughs> that's the black riot stab speaking of um <laughs> now i told um rave generator off for using illegal samples if that's not a recreate that's also illegal but this is a recording of sounds from um, this module was released in the 90s right the uh the emu orbit so it was in the early days of sample law. <laughs> hmm, I kind of like that. Yeah, it's between easy hits and uh why not do both let's have a layer let's have a layer actually i don't know if i can layer these because these aren't in key <laughs> 
these these stabs are kind of well like rave generators they're sampled and you see that's not f sharp that's a b yeah one two three four so i'm going to pitch this one down what's the other stab is this one um is this one actually f sharp yes this is f sharp I'm going to, have to pitch this one down by one, two, three, four, five, five. If you want to know how I know the pitch, unfortunately, there are no quick tricks there. Well, actually, what am I talking about? Of course, there is a trick. Um, let me just do this before I forget. So I'm doing that because I have uh, what we call relative pitch. I trained my ears in my teens to be able to um, know the distances between notes. So as long as I can hear one note first, I can judge every other note after that, and I understand how far away it is. So that's how I know where chords are shifting and things like that when I listen back to stuff I've never heard before. I can usually get it on the first try. Um, for those of you still training your ears, I mean, obviously, if you pressed this, it wouldn't sound great. So that would be your first clue that something was off. Let's just listen to this one on its own. So hopefully you can hear this is off. Versus... Does everyone... Agree that that sounds in, that sounds at home versus this one. Versus this. Can everyone hear that that's the correct key so if you did determine if you did determine that that was off how do you find out where how far it is off well we can just solo uh, luckily this sample has a bass already in it so this is going to be very easy but if you if you look at span You'll see this bottom pair of harmonics here. This is going to be our fundamental. Uh, you can put span in a higher resolution mode, by the way. Let's go. Um, this drops the frame rate quite a lot. <laughs> and we can hold. But you can see that's, um, that's a B. It says there. Uh, so that's B. So there's your clue and then if you want it to be in tune if you know obviously you're in f sharp you've picked your key for your track you count down from b one two three four five so i'm going to do this on on the pitch shift so i can lay these stabs both on f sharp and of course we don't want that bass note in there we're done for bass for now we can be quite ruthless with this Probably all the way up there. Now I want a shorter note. Yeah, somewhere in between that. There we go. What does that echo sound like on this one? Just a little bit, not many repeats. Obviously, no point side chaining this stab because it's on the one. If it was a long note, you might consider it. Let's put a little bit of 
width on the bass for stereo users because it's quite a plain sound. When it comes to bass sounds, I don't think I explained this much in the bass processing, actually. Um, if you're using any kind of unison or chorus, which takes it more trance than house, it's kind of one of the big differentiating factors, <laughs> is the amount of detune equals trance. <laughs> how much trance versus how much house. Um, these kind of detune things like um, uh, unison and chorus. There's a similar thing achieved in different ways. Um, they're going to add natural width. You, your synth is automatically going to have um, that all panned about in a nice way. Now, it's bad for sub-frequencies. You don't want to do this on a bass that's actually providing your bass frequencies because... Uh, this causes lots of phase cancellation. If you want uh, width on like a really pure classic sounding bass, uh, you know, classic sound like this, and you don't want to mess with the actual flavor of the sound just to get some width, uh, we all know I prefer Stereo Touch by Voxengo. You can also use Wider by Infected Mushroom. I think it was, it was the company. Anything under 30 milliseconds. I'm going to put the high pass filter in. Not that we need it, I think. But it's just adding an out of phase echo. So when we when we check in mono, that completely goes away. And it doesn't affect our bass sound. So while we're checking in mono, we'll leave that about 6, 7, 8 dBs down. I'm on headphones, so I'm not going to do too many stereo judgments. Uh, that's what this plugin is for. I will get to that later. Because if you didn't know, headphones are not stereo. They're binaural. Let's listen to the whole thing in mono. Yep, everything survives. We don't lose the clap. The stabs obviously get less nice. But in terms of their role in the track, they're fine. Our our bounce off bass or whatever you want to call this. Um, that's still fine. That's doing its job. The groove. I've decided I want that turnaround bass to go down the octave. I may even put a third bass in here. Something like that. That's pretty cool. So we need uh, arrangement decisions. Imagine that's something like our drop. Do we drop with vocal? He does. Atmosphere is a vocal chop hook. So maybe we go that route. Uh, and it's got the top thing as well. Now that's a completely different groove, but we could, if we really like that rave sound on top, that might be a nice pickup idea. I'm feeling vocal chop and pickup idea. Atmosphere is all floaty, isn't it? So I really respect that mix, actually. The, the fact that there's no snare drum build, there's no noise, no cymbal, no, no crash cymbal on the drop either. That's something I lean on a lot when I'm struggling to drop. I'll just throw a crash cymbal on there. <laughs> Usually a quick way of saving it. I'm just going to put the DJ EQ on uh, the master. And for the pre-drop, we're just going to take out not much of the highs. I'm just going to leave the middle soloed here. We're going to take out the lows. We may take a, a leaf out of Atmosphere's book. I'm just going to put a very simple pad in. A pad which I can open on, open up the filter on, so we can use that as part of our build. Uh, speaking of trance, we just crank the unison, put the filter on. I'm going to put a seventh chord in on the one. 
Actually, we can play around with different chords. Uh, let's go for all 16 bars here. I already know what chord to program. This is a seventh and this is an F sharp minus seven. If you don't know how to do chord one in F sharp, well, in minor, any chord one in any minor, start on A, build your chord that way, and then just transpose down. Now we know, just use all the white notes in A to determine your minor scale and then transpose it to where you need it. I might even put a little bit of noise in here. Let's go, just move the octave on that pad. I want the filter. Let's just grab this. Now, while I'm here, actually, let me just show you what is going on with um, Fisher's pad in the break, just so you know, because it's a, it's a good, useful trick to know. I'm holding the one here, which isn't the most suspenseful way of doing things. I'm just kind of doing that because I'm lazy. Let me put the pitch bend in so I can show you, not pitch bend, transpose. Down from A to F sharp. So I can show you everything in A. So there's our chord one. Let's take the seventh off for now. What Fish is doing in his break is going between um, chord six and five. White notes. It's every um, bar, isn't it? Keep on the white notes. He has sevenths on them. So one extension upwards. And if that sounds familiar, yes, we will get to Born Slippy one day. <laughs> Similar trick. And the principle is anything around chord six, if you want something to sound, well, perpetually floating, uh, like almost unfinished, chord six is a great choice for things like breaks because then you have to resolve back to, back to one. We don't even need the five here. Go for less transition. Tech House largely uses what we call a one drop, which is the bass line is, is centered around the tonic of your chord, the note one of your, sorry, of your scale. Obviously, we're in F sharp uh, Phrygian here, so we're, we're leaning on F sharp. F sharp is where home is. If you take people away temporarily from home, it's going to drop a little better when you finally get back this. I want a chopped up vocal. I'm going to take the uh, the DOD one for the chop up. It doesn't matter what I use. If you saw my Stutter House tutorial, it doesn't matter what the, the vocal is for the chop up. This was B minor, isn't it? So we need to go down five. See how we sound. Uh, this needs to be one beat earlier. Let's take it back to a time when we were so much in love, baby. Ooh, yeah. There are some tracks on the pain because it's just so long. Yeah. <laughs> that really works. <laughs> Track done. It's over. Uh, I'm, I'm very annoyed I didn't spot this vocal. It was in the same folder as Sublime. I mean, Sublime worked better for my piano house track. Um, but <laughs> I couldn't believe I may actually use a compressor for the sidechain on this. 
but um i'm going to chop chop up the vocal obviously we want a a hook to go with the bass uh doo -doo -doo -doo. kick drum kick drum kick drum I'm going to let it react to higher frequencies of the kick drum because I don't need to. It's not going to be clashing with the bass frequency. There we go. Now I don't have to automate it off when the vocal is uh, not with a kick drum. What can we do with um with our chords here? I think I might just go six and four again, just avoiding the one. Let's take it back to a time when we were so much in love, baby. Ooh, yeah. Let us retract all the pain we caused each other so long, yeah. Actually, that's sounding good. Let's, um, I can suddenly hear a pitch bend. So I'm going to turn this on to three. Uh, my only gripe with Vital, by the way, is the pitch bend doesn't work until you enable MPE. It's very annoying. I think it's an Ableton specific issue as well. So we're going to use pitch bends. I want to go something like this. Let's take it back to a time when we were so much in love, baby. Ooh, yeah. Let us on the pain because each other so long. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Um, and then back the other way. Let's take it back to a time when we were so much in love, baby. Ooh, yeah. Let us retract on the pain because each other so long. Yeah. Yeah. Mint, uh, mint vocal hook uh, pack. It's a little muddy because we've pitched it down. Just going to remove some of the lowest. That's fine, to be honest. Again, not going to spend very long on that. I want delay. I'm going to use a six sample delay because I want the uh, the duck feature. I'm going to duck it out, uh, duck the echo out of the way until the vocal disappears. You don't need that many repeats. Hats need to change. I'm going to take. Let's take it back to time. I want the hi hat energy to be different in the drop. So I'm going to. We could just pick another loop, but I am going to uh, shorten this open hi hat here with a just a, a volume envelope. Let's take it back. So we've got that going on now instead of so that high energy high hat will be our pickup. Let's take it back to a time when we were so much in love, baby. Ooh, yeah. Let us retract on the pain because each other so long, yeah. We could smudge. Let's take it back to a time when we were so much in love, baby. Ooh,
not bad. That works. That works. I think our vocal's too loud. Let us also let's do our let's do our hook, our chopped up hook. I think the highest note, the back, would be a nice one to grab. Just going to throw that in a sampler, copy paste. Let's put our side chain on over here as well. Let's have a play with some. <laughs> now, there's a, there's a bend, so I think I'm going to... Do we, want, do we want syncopation or do we want square groove? <laughs> oh, we're not swung. We're not swung. Yeah, not really, not really. Oh, that might be a good, a good tone. We don't have to drop with that. That could be a pickup, maybe. Let's duplicate twice and add a turn around with the bass. I think the side chain could be heavier. That's the melodic version. We could also, speaking of Dom Dollar earlier, you could literally just, you could add this as a, almost as a, a percussive. Pace thing or the uh, melodic, and not not to say we couldn't use both. But... I don't know how far behind the the stream is sorry so when you say yes pick that one i don't know which one <laughs> oh binary solo wants polymeter polymeter in tech house get banned you're disgusting <laughs> we could do we could do i'll tell you what i will i will change these to different colors so we can vote on colors um let's go purple blue and yellow for now uh, polymeter you could do with um, uh, the camel fat thing. Every three. Did 
Doesn't have to be. Um, it's a little bit more confusing because our bass is on um, square groove like this blue one. Let's carry that on to its logical conclusion. to take the swing off that a bit swing hurts these cross rhythms a little bit polymeter cross rhythm there's lots of ways of uh, describing these you could also do something like um you could actually keep it in um keep it on the on the bass vibe but swap octaves every three this would be a form of polymeter but not or maybe you would um it'd be one low and two high that's kind of a hybrid polymeter of um that one and that whole thing I think limiting that to two bars would be pretty good. No, it doesn't work when it's changes pitches. Note length uh, would be good to mess around with. That sounded good when it went uh, long accidentally then. That's what she said. I'm sorry. I had to. How does the straight one? I think blue's winning for me, but the cross rhythm was certainly worth explore, exploring. I'd prob it's probably the wrong sound for it, wrong bass line. You could absolutely do um, polymeter in Tech House, probably with a different bass line. Anyways. I'm thinking that skip doesn't happen every time. Oh, no, 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 no. I did like some of the A nice turnaround. Let's take it back to a time when we were so much in love, baby. Ooh, baby. Let us on the pain because each other so long. Yeah. Let's take it back to a time when we were so the tops. much in love. Baby. Fade out the kick as well. Let us on the pain. Nice. 
Nice. Do we have everything we need for a track? Probably. I can hear more drum pickups. Maybe some interesting fills. Yeah, so arrangement-wise, for those who struggle to finish the loop, this is where you need to put your producer hat back on, and you need to think about its final destination. Obviously, it's a club track. We know that. But there's, there's deeper considerations like where in the set does it go? Who's playing it? And what are they playing it back to back with? Those kind of things. That would determine a lot of your arrangement decisions. Because you could absolutely turn this into an underground eight minute thing. If this was an eight minute mix for a smaller club with um, lots of red lights, <laughs> I might swap out that stab for a darker stab. It might affect the amount of reverb I put on things because in a smaller club things bounce around more you can get away with a much drier rawer sounding track whereas i wouldn't have to change a lot of the elements like you know the bass line would stay probably just the stabs maybe you might not swing it as much there's lots of decisions like that if you're so new and you don't dj yet yourself there's absolutely nothing wrong with just taking this extended mix structure from from noizu there's nothing wrong with that because they have a lot more expertise than you do. They've made it this way for a reason. Uh, so you would just do that until you learn to get your own feel for your own arrangements. We probably drop without this. You may put in fills from this. Because hooks are always even more powerful when you tease them. Kind of that kind of thing. Might not keep this, but, you know, that kind of idea. Um, just for now. Preferably we've got different ones of these. And then this might be where we... Um, so we come back to smaller drums. Automation. There we go. Sorry. So we go back to bass, no sub. We don't have to creep it in though. And we can filter in our vocal hook. Bring the smudge over. The pad. Now, you don't have to do, um, you'll know from your track whether it's appropriate to do that anti-drop thing. I don't think we do in this case because the, uh, I don't know, actually, I mean, you could do either. We could pull a snare in here. It doesn't, uh, it's not actually necessary. If your drop is already working, uh, we might need a snare for the last um, build though. So I'm just going to grab, I already have uh, one pre-done. So that'll do 16s. If you didn't know, by the way, Ableton lets you save stuff just by dragging it into the browser. So that, that would save my entire pad, its sounds and MIDI. So you could draw on it for later. So it's useful to have all things like that ready to go. This is just a snare roll. Uh, it's made of some cashmere samples and a, a Mark Knight. It sounded great together. And I just saved it because I was so happy with it. So. May even go, um, might mute the hi hats there.
<laughs> Where's your drop gone? Pull the claps out for extra anticipation right at the end. Something like that. Actually, while we're doing Fisher style, there is one more thing you can do to that pad to add um, uh, interest. He did it on um, Take It Off. He adds pitch wobble. So we could go, um, we could add an LFO to the pitch and increase this over time via the LFO. So that's correct. We don't want to trigger, we want this on sync so it doesn't start again every time. Right, we want to go up and down. So this is bipolar. So the amount of that. Right, now it's working. And this goes to speed. And then we can just add the chaos right at the end. <laughs> doesn't really, doesn't really work. You can't actually hear what's going on there. But if you need that effect, now you know how to do it. These things should be tried. Fine. I've not labeled anything, have What do you do about volume sounding quieter whilst the track is being sidechained? Oh, right, yes. Um, I showed that on the Stutter House video because the gating of the, the Stutter House has very much the sim similar effect because you're cutting out the sound for half the time. You have to compensate the volume, yes. So if it's an important part that needs to drop, you either um, have it quieter in the break by 3dB and then have the sidechain automated on at plus 3dB or something like that. So let's take that f example. We'll, but imagine that was our 30 second drop 1.5. Obviously we can go to a, a mix out section here. So I'm going to take the smaller drums and the kick drum and the bass. We'll leave the sub in. Turn down the um, length of the open higher. Now oh, that loop doesn't work at all without the. There we go. I was missing the last bit of the tambourine. So this is the opportunity for them to mix out. When it comes to your break arrangements, you have a, a, another decision to make, which is the decision you have is, are you going to roll or not roll? So do you keep the groove flowing all the way through? So you're keeping everyone dancing, but the energy is lower. What I call small dancing. I hope you understand that small dancing section. Uh, do we roll all the way through or do we go 
uh, no drums and have like a bit of a moment. This one, this kind of thing. That's still way too loud. Let's try a reverse version of that. It sounds like disclosure all of a sudden. What are my thoughts on adding vinyl noise and those sorts of crackles as background layer to fill empty gaps? Absolutely. Yeah, I think that brings lots of flavor. Yeah, there's a great plugin called Textures. There's lots of ways of doing this, by the way. Um, obviously, um, be careful where you put these, but um, let's put this on the drum bus, for example. So this only plays when sound comes through it. There's, there's um, vinyl and tape in here. Um, you can uh, high pass, low pass, by the way, as well. Something like that, maybe. Um, or obviously, you could use uh, Isotopes Vinyl. That will actually give you the pitch wobble as well, which is... Um, actually, let's, let's throw that on our pad. Something like that. Nothing wrong with a bit of wobble and wear. You can choose. Although you do have to be wary of the mains hum. And the mains hum. They can add a lot of subs. So just be wary of that. Uh, but yes, I think it's a nice way to add texture, especially if you're nostalgic for it. Like, you know, our age. <laughs> uh, right, how do we build? How do we build? Obviously, the, the pad the pad is now going to be on a longer rise for uh, the filter. I might put some reverb on this pad. Of course, we're going to use Dragonfly because it's, uh, it's an atmospheric, moody, moody thing. Let's take it back to a time when we were so much in love, baby. Ooh, yeah. Let us retract on Let's take it back to a time when we were so much in love, baby. Uh, as for the early decision of whether we're going to roll through, I think I am. Uh, I think we go to uh, small kick. We'll have a break from the bass because that's been in all the way through. This might be where we um, we could always introduce a pad bass. I'm just going to take the the pad parts, keep the bottom note because I want the I want to keep that pitch bend as well. This is going to go down probably an octave or two. We'll soon find out. Accidentally lengthen those notes. There we go. Oh. I forgot about the pitch. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I have plenty of bass pad presets. Let's just grab one of those. Bass pad thick. Um, oh yeah, we've got one. We are. We need to turn MPE on so. Pitch bend behaves. And I think I actually want this high pass on the kick drum only, so we can actually have our thick bass being thick. There we go. Now, do we keep any open percussion? Maybe a 
little one. Like maybe... Turn this down though, definitely. Or it might just be a case of, uh, I think that hi hat sounds a little bit thick, so I might just, I'll just bring it down to that. pass on for we are going to be smudging to build out probably from halfway and this will be a fade out or kick and drums. Snare is going to get very loud. Bass will also fade out. We don't want uh, this bass to take away from the bass of the drop. So I think I'm going to high pass further the pad as well. I may still do something with pitch. And the bass should be coming back in like it does in the intro. Let's take it back to a time when we were so much in love. This needs to be high passed. We just need the character coming through, not the bottom end messing with our actual bass notes. Something like that. And we can also... We can high pass that. Let's take it back to a time when we were so much in love. Be opening the hi hats. Let's take it back to a time when we were so much in love. Ooh, let us retract on the page. I want those actually even shorter. Let me just look at the envelope. I'm going to turn the um, let's put the decay up and the sustain down. Let's take it back to a time when we were so much in love. Not the most convincing uh, build and drop yet, but that's going to be the principle.
we do. Um, let's get some energy back in the room. Do, 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 do. Oh, hang on. Uh, nope. There we go. Too far. I want to turn the delay up as we go. And the duck down so we get overwhelmed by delay. And the smudge needs to carry on. I want this in a filter as well. Let's crank the resonance so it calls attention to itself. something i didn't quite go over thoroughly in my how to drop video uh there's a couple of ways of doing this um extra washy drop you can go straight in like this with the sudden cut or you can kind of fade back um so that they know when it's coming both work kind of thing. Doesn't really work with this vocal because we don't carry on with the vocal. Although we could. We need to think about what our last drop addition would be. Actually, uh, I, once, I was thinking about the rave synth anyway, wasn't I? From, um, was it the um, burning? I think a ravey thing. I'm kind of hearing that as Darudi, Darudi Sandstormy, which means we need two oscillators, one, an octave and a half up. And then I am going to square wave LFO. Um, actually, we could either do it with ring modulation, FM or amplitude modulation. There's, there's a couple of ways of doing this. I'll show you my instinct was to do this. No. We just need a square wave LFO. And what you do is basically set this very fast to the, actually just the volume of the, the synth in general would be fine. get that kind of vibe Other things, let's just put some of the inbuilt reverb on for the minute. Um. Crap. 
preferably squarish waveforms. Let's try some ring modulation as well. Let me bypass you for a minute. hide the oscillator we could fm from this one down the octave <laughs> Tune, that's the question. Do we rave? delay but not all the frequencies not that loud let's try and get some growl by poking the mids into the distortion should be too distorted but we will find out let's get the same side chain on as um upper bass for now i imagine all that distortion is creating lots of nastiness at the bottom yes it is let's get rid i may curb the um Actually, not the side chain. We need a very gentle one. I'm picturing us being on the one. Short. Ah, this this may be where we do the cross rhythm, the uh, polymeter. We need to be swung somewhat. Let us try a variation of the bass line.
I think I want control over the um, the delay, just like my other. Considering the energy. My voice is very quiet compared to the track. Sorry. Oh, I totally forgot I moved everything to zero, didn't I? <laughs> Using the same um, bass, maybe we do need the side chain to be. Similar. Question is, where would that come in? I would like some pad automation. Some interest. Let's take it back to a time when we were so much in love, baby. Ooh, yeah. Let us retract all the pain we caused each other so long, yeah. The mood with some more reverb on the string as well i heard a high string there always good for tension literally anything will do uh let's go for 90s vibes with micro keys another freebie you should have in your collection Just holding on the one. Oh, it sounds good in that octave as well. this song yeah i probably should right where's my new rave thing this needs to start coming in
of way into that sin. Fade the vocal out. Such this should. We may need um, another track for just a, a final vocal. Like a drop vocal. Put a. I want a thin reverb on that one. Don't want any echo on this one. Although we could echo off the the back, might be nice for drop energy. But we've got the rave already. It's probably overkill. <laughs> Add the strings back in. Let's go with a nice big um, 909 ride. While we're in 909 mood. Making, uh, join the hi-hats. Which one is it? Give me the crunchy one. happened before <laughs> you think you've exported the song and uh, another bit comes in at the end great way to screw over a DJ if you ever needed to just put a whole other song at the end of the mix out <laughs> Fade out the sub and some things in uh, let's get full base at 15 seconds this this stuff's kind of arbitrary uh, you'll have to speak to if you're not a DJ you won't have an instinct for uh, the DJ themselves will usually cut the bass on the mix in anyway, so don't worry too much about these decisions, about when to bring the bottom end in and stuff like that, but typically you start with the bottom end out. I've got the bottom end out on the master, uh, on the kick, sorry. And then let's put the sub bass in here. And then I'm going to pull the bass back out for the, the pad section when the vocal comes in. Maybe we could just 
just got very thin with it. I'm not sure yet. Ah, oh, that's fine. Pad off. Let's mute that um, when we when we drop. Or else that's gonna. could be um, I don't mind something kind of stuck out a bit though what I call a lumpy a lumpy mix <laughs> what my manager calls a lumpy mix anyway I just heard a, I think we could go clap fill there. in too often to be honest. So that transitions a little bit smoother. It's 
a vocal from Splice, yeah. Obviously, we know COD had a hit with it. 